the Everything But Politics podcast. What is going on? We are here, episode number 51 of the Everything But Politics podcast. Today, we welcome our good friend Brad Fenwick to the show. Brad, thank you for joining us here on the pod. Awesome, guys. It's uh, it's an honor and a privilege. I'm super excited to, to jump on with you guys and listen to some of, some of your podcasts. And I, I love the discussion, so I'm excited to dive into it. appreciate it. And, and like you said, we're slowly making our way into the art world. So happy to learn more about all these different forms of art and uh, hear more about you and your background. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I'm a, I'm a primarily an acrylic artist out of Toronto. So I uh, mainly work with uh, acrylic paint. Um, I've been painting for just over four years now. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's a completely self-taught venture at this point, a lot of trial and error. But uh, I've been I've been, uh, yeah, just absolutely loving it. Been painting, painting quite a bit and looking forward to to continue it going going into the future. And let me ask you this. So when you're you're an acrylic painter at what point in your life did you kind of find this calling for yourself? Was it like in high school during art class? You just p- picked it up or like where, where did you find this talent? So it it did kind of uh, come out of nowhere per se. So um, my actual education background is in diagnostic imaging. So I do uh, medical imaging as my full time job uh, currently as well. Um, but about four years ago, when I was doing my schooling in between, um, semesters, I went on, uh, a trip with my brother out to, to BC, out to Vancouver Island. And I had, uh, when we got, when we got home from the, the trip, I had a week off, um, in between the vacation and then going back to school and where I was living at the time, I was in an apartment with, uh, some plank walls and I had some, taken some nice pictures while I was out there, uh, in, in Vancouver Island. And I was thought to myself, I was like, oh, you know what, I'm just going to use this free time and, and paint myself something for the walls. So I, I went to, to Michael's and bought all the stuff and did a painting for about three hours. And at the end of the three hours, I was like in shock about just like how much fun I had doing it. So from that, pretty much from that point on, I just started painting and I've been painting almost every day since. And uh, up to that point in your life, did you have any true passions or was that kind of like something that you did this? You're like, Oh, wow. I could see myself doing this going forward. Um, I, I like to think that I've always had a little bit of uh, creative interest. So um, when I was when I was younger, I started playing the drums around 10 and played the drums right up until about uh, 22, 23. Um, stopped playing them because of uh, moving into an apartment and stuff. It's not very cohesive and appreciated by the neighbors. So that that helped me had to get uh, kicked out. And, you know, I've always I've always just really enjoyed, uh, you know, all, all creative outlets. Um, even like doing simple stuff like making videos or whatever, but uh, painting is the one that that has really stuck as like the, the thing that I really love to do. And Brett, how does your first painting compare to the paintings you have now? I'm sure you've gotten a lot better. Uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I I like to think so for sure. The from the, the the very first painting that I made, actually one of my one of my buddies bought it off me quite a while ago, and he said he's gonna hang on to it until it's uh. So it's worth something, but uh, you know yeah. that would that's still probably quite a, quite a ways off. But uh, no, it's 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 definitely a slow and steady progression. But you know, it's uh, you really enjoy the journey, or at least I find that I do. As you know, from one piece to the next, you you notice it's not like super um, super apparent from one piece to the next. But I always strive to um, try and make each painting a little bit better than the last one. So slowly over time, the the general quality, I say, starts to improve, and just through trial and error, I, I'm I'm happy with the progress that I've uh, that I've had so far. Yeah, and Brad, the paintings you have, it seems like there's kind of a theme to them. A lot of them have that like same look to it, kind of like uh, computer generated. They look so detailed. Um, how would you kind of describe that theme you have going on? Yeah, so especially when I was just starting to get into painting. Um, one of the things that I was always thinking about is I trying to develop a style that would really come across as like my own, like Brad Fenwick art. But, you know, it's not something that you really necessarily think about um, putting that together. It just kind of comes out with the way that you you do the painting, like your own individual interpretation of what you see. Um, the artwork that I do right now, I would describe it as uh, cartoon realism. So it, 
it looks like you know it's not a photograph but at the same time it doesn't look like the simpsons you know what i mean so somewhere in between like a, a photograph and like the simpsons kind of thing where there's you know i'll, I'll do some things like uh, i'll do some subtle outlining um and you know it's it's not quite as blended as things would be in like an actual photo but yeah i would i would describe what i do mostly as as cartoon realism okay. and brad something i'm curious about so like you you listened to our interview with weston lambert which was fascinating for Evan and i both how important do you think it is in this modern age of art to be active on social media tiktok instagram posting your stuff so people like Evan and myself are able to find your work and we were able to have conversations like this uh, I think I think obviously you know the more exposure you have, I think that's that's one of the ways that you're ultimately going to grow your your artistic brand. So I think it is it is super important. Um, contrary to that, there are a couple artists that I admire that aren't as active on social media, but they have you know some some incredible work that's more like uh, in person installations or like um, private commissions that they've done, and you know they they do some super exceptional work, but they're they're not. They're not on TikTok, and they don't have you know like thousands and thousands of followers. So, I think I think to each their own. It depends on what you're really trying to do. Like, if you want to just be a local artist and have work out in a gallery just where where you are. I mean, you could you could potentially find success that way. But overall, I would say the the more of a presence you have on social media and across the different social media platforms, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok, you know, I think just more exposure will ultimately lead to the growth and um, uh, opportunity for different people to find your artwork. And when you, when you began posting, was it right when you kind of found your talent or was it later on when you said, okay, if I'm going to grow myself and what I'm doing, I got to start posting content. Uh, I, I started posting the content right away. Um, Mostly, mostly the audience was was primarily just friends at that point. Uh, so you know, I, I I did get some some good feedback. You know, just because it's people I know, and it wasn't you know I didn't really have any I would say haters at that point. But um, yeah, it was it was something that I wanted to put out there right away. I think ultimately, as much as I enjoy making the paintings, I like and like I like to look at them. Um, I'm primarily trying to make things that other people will be able to enjoy, whether if it's just looking at it for a second online or if they actually, you know, want to commission or buy a piece that I've done. Um, the biggest reward that I personally get out of doing painting is knowing that I've created something for someone else to enjoy, even if it's just, you know, for hanging on their wall a couple seconds in a day or just a quick glance online or watching a video or something. I find that, you know, really rewarding to, to think that you've put something out into the world that wasn't there before and you know people are getting enjoyment out of it so agreed and Evan, yeah. my brother ethan they uh have a band so the same enjoyment it's nice to see other people enjoy other people's work but a question i had before evan goes here is that you mentioned haters um how how have you noticed or seen haters since you've kind of grown on social media so uh, that's that's one thing it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting situation because as of right now i wouldn't even say that i have faders i've I've had a couple of like negative comments and stuff but uh it's it's kind of it's kind of like um counterintuitive in the sense that i know that i haven't really made it to a point where i want to be until i do have haters because you know some of the, all the all the people that i follow that i really admire that are incredible artists for whatever reason, there's people posting on all their on all their paintings, and it's like exceptional work too. There's people posting on all of their work, like this sucks. Like, why why does it look like this? You know, so it's like I think that it's kind of a rite of passage to to really establish your establish yourself as a you know an actual artist. You need to have some haters, like to know to know that you made it. Like anyone who's anyone who's famous, you can look at that um, across sports or music as well. It's like you know. Um, Oh, LeBron James sucks, or you know, Taylor Swift. Anything where Taylor Swift, we're successful. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, I've had a couple comments, and the people say a couple things that are negative, but I wouldn't say that you know the the I would say like ninety five percent of the feedback that I get on social media and even in person is is overwhelmingly positive, which is good when you're just starting out and you're trying to grow and learn. Like you know that that encouragement helps to push you forward. So. Um, 
I, I feel dumb saying that, but with time, I hope I I do get some haters because that'll mean I'm going in the right direction. But <laughs> so, Brad, how long does each artwork usually take you? Uh, so I I put quite a bit of time into into the paintings just because they they usually are like like you said they, they're, there's there's a relative amount of detail in them. Um, so each each piece takes between probably 15 to, to 60 hours um it just depends on the size and the complexity like for example you know if i'm if i'm doing a painting with a, a single person or a single figure it obviously takes less time than if i'm doing something with three people and a, and a big background or something so it really does depend but i would say you know any anywhere between um anywhere between 15 to 60 hours and Brad, for anyone listening that may be an aspiring painter themselves, walk us through what it's like to paint someone's face. But I feel like that's so complex. And as you heard, I heard with our Weston interview, he kind of walked us through negative space, which I guess is a key component to sculpting faces and stuff like that. Is it similar when you're doing painting when you're painting faces? For sure, for sure. Uh, well, the the one thing that I found with with uh, trying to paint faces to where. You know, it's it's immediately recognizable as the person you're trying to paint. Um, it's it's really quite shocking how how like just a small change in the proportions um, can completely change what the individual looks like. And what I mean by that is if if you do like let's say if you're drawing someone's right eye and you do the lower eyelid too low, or if you do like um, if you put the the mouth a little bit too high or a little bit too wide, it, it doesn't look anything like them. So it, it is it is quite um, tedious in that sense that you have to really try and um, you know get it exact as you can with the proportions. I would say that's definitely the hardest part. Once you get the proportions down, the shading the shading is um, you know that takes time as well. But it's it's definitely a proportion game. So there are there are definitely tools that you can use to try and uh, get these proportions perfect and sets. I, I I honestly believe that there's nobody who can just from their eye look and copy a photo exactly or copy someone's face exactly. I could be wrong, but I truly believe that it's just it's just impossible because it is so precise. And um, so there are tools that you can use. So for example, uh, one tool that um, I used to use, I don't use as much anymore, but it's 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 pretty effective is you, you draw out a grid and then you can so instead of having one picture and you're copying it onto one canvas you divide it up into like a single square inch so now you have like nine boxes by 18 boxes or something and you can draw in around the boxes i think that's a, a technique that you might have even seen before i know they 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 do teach that at some point with with art where you you're using boxes as reference points um so that's one way to do it and another way to do it is um using a projector and tracing over the image and there is a little bit of uh controversy in regards to that for for whatever reason people like to say that that's cheating i saw someone post something the other day and it sparked a huge debate um and uh you know what one of the comments someone said is like it's like well i mean just because you're tracing it doesn't mean that you're not paying it's like would you rather someone put the shingles on your roof with just a hammer or are they cheating if they use an air gun you know what i mean like it's it, you're still doing the work um, but I don't know what, what, what would you guys say to that? What do you think about the idea of if you hear someone's uh, tracing? Well, I, I think I think it's like it's like uh, in my opinion, it's like if you're not using AI and all these tools that you have at your disposal, you're gonna get left behind. Why not use the sketching? I that's my yeah. my opinion. It seems also somewhat necessary because like e like you said, each face is so unique. To you, you want to get as much detail as possible. And I was just taking a look at your some of your Instagram pics, and I mean they're so, the faces are so detailed. Like you can clearly tell, you know that's Tiger Woods, that's Tony Fina, that's Patrick Kane, Ovechkin. You can clearly see them. You don't have to guess. Taylor, even the Taylor Swift one, Eminem. It's very easy to tell. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that's that's something that that I I go for, or like I strive for. Um, as as of right now, I'm also doing like a lot of commission work. So I do paintings of you know um, uh, people's relatives. Like the, mm -hmm. uh, I do I do live painting at at weddings and stuff. So when you're dealing with actual people, like you you really have to uh, you know you don't want to paint someone's mom, for example, and 
you don't paint them right. Like, and then, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a risk I'm not really willing to take. So, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying, Merrick. And, you know, uh, I, I do think that you need to use the tools at your, at your disposal to, you know, ultimately improve and uh, grow your work and just put out the best product you can. Well, Brad, let's talk through the next steps of that. So you have your sketch down and when it comes to the acrylic paint, what happens if, and when you do make a mistake, I mean, is the is the project fucked, or do you move forward and pivot around the mistake you made? Yeah. So, so the one thing that's really nice about um, acrylic paint is it's it's very forgiving in the sense that um, one, it's opaque, meaning that um, you know it's it's it covers over things. Like it's not it's not thin. So if you if you make a line with um, acrylic paint and let's say red, you can then go ahead and put like once it dries, put like another color over top and it'll almost be invisible you might have to do a couple layers so you, you could definitely fix your mistakes which is what's really nice about acrylic paints um and you know that's for for anyone who's who's even thinking about uh trying to start painting i want to toss this in there because i did it on a whim but i would really love for you know if anyone's listening if they're ever thinking about trying painting honestly say just go for it give it a try try acrylics very forgiving you have a chance to to fix your mistakes as you go and uh you know and that's that's how i that's how i've been able to learn and improve has mostly been um paint something do it not as well as i would like to paint over it and uh keep going so it's yeah it's trial and error and acrylic will allow you to fix those mistakes as you go um oil painting and watercolor is not the same you if you make a mistake on those you're, you're in bigger big trouble especially with watercolor wait so say when you're painting someone's face right and you come to the eye, say you put the pupil a little too high, can you just do something like wait for it to dry, go over it with white, and then later on put the black lower? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Gotcha. Okay. And, and I, 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 that, that definitely, that definitely happens. I think that's, a, I think that's a good visual example for our listeners. I know it is for myself. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Nice. Brad, will you be painting tonight? Like, what's your, uh, I like. I, I was I was painting before I got on here and I'm gonna be painting when I hop off. Yeah, it's uh it's definitely it's definitely a passion project and I look forward to doing it every day. Um, I work full time, so it's it's uh, eight hours at work and then you know get home, make dinner, but usually from about five thirty six o'clock, I I start painting until about eleven almost every day. Tell us about your what you do for work because I feel like a lot of people listening that are chasing dreams like that they have to work as well and. Now, obviously, I'm sure you'd rather paint full time, but what is it like? We're essentially, working two jobs at the same time. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so I my my actual title it's a nuclear medicine technologist. Um, it's basically it's it's like diagnostic imaging um, beyond X rays or CT. Um, so, like you know, let's say you have I don't know uh, pain in your stomach or something. We'll we'll. We'll, we can do testing to see like functionally what's going on with the stomach to try and diagnose. Um, I, d- I do enjoy it. It's, it's good. Um, but you know, at, at this point in time, I'm, I'm really like trying to, trying to get to a point where I do the painting full time because that's obviously what I really enjoy. Um, I don't know if, if you've seen the, the paintings where I do it, that having this job has kind of helped me in a way because, um, I don't know if you have you seen the paintings where I do the like the black light stuff. I, I, I personally I've seen more of like the paintings of of certain figures. I'm not I honestly not exactly familiar with what you're talking about. What do you mean? Yeah. So, so uh, if you're if you're on my Instagram page still, there's a, there's a couple paintings on there. Um, there's a uh, the Eminem one, the Jack Sparrow one, and uh, the Travis Barker one. Uh, those all have so those are paintings, but on top of those, I've also drawn skeletons or other uh, other components in UV ink, so it's completely invisible to the naked eye. But um, under UV ink, there's a whole additional component to the painting. So oh, that's yeah. uh, that's something that's that's been helpful with with being at work all day while I'm doing X-rays and stuff like that to uh, to have that kind of reference point. And while I think about paintings, like, hey, well, why don't I just combine these two things together? So. Um, I would say that that's probably my most ambitious uh, work that I've done so far, and it's something that I really enjoy doing. And it's it's kind of a wow factor for people when they see it because you know it's like I guess I know I've already said this, but it's it is completely invisible, and it's um, 
you know, just like a, just like a wow factor. So. And if someone were to purchase one of these paintings, I mean, is there any way they could tell, like when you do purchase a painting of, of yourself, when it has components like that, is it mentioned like somewhere? How would, how would people know that? For, for sure. So, uh, it's, it's definitely, I would say like, uh, a, a selling point or an incentive for people to, to know it. I'm not at a point where, where I'm, you know, putting in secret messaging and stuff and like, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's not the Da Vinci code yet. So <laughs> it's just, uh, I, I definitely, I definitely try and market those pieces with those additional components. And, um, what, what I really envision with those is it's, it's something like the painting by itself. It looks, it looks nice. I like to think at least I think that the painting by itself, it looks nice. And then when you add that additional component, it's kind of like, in a sense, having like an NFT, I would say only in the sense that like, it's, it's not, obviously not an NFT, but it's something that only you have and like you own. And it's only like, it's not digitally available. So you can't like look at the picture. Like I take pictures of it and I post both, but to actually have the painting in your home and then to, you know, let's say you're, you're hanging out with buddies or whatever, playing pool downstairs, you have the painting on the wall and you can change the light and it becomes a whole different piece. And only, you know, about that, like the owner of the piece and you can, you know, it's, it's something cool that hopefully you can, you can share with friends or wh whoever you want to. That's kind of the, the idea behind it. It's, it's exclusivity in my mind. Love that. That's very cool. Love that too. And that was my next question. Are all the pieces one of ones then? Uh, yeah. So all, all the paintings that I've done, they're, they're um, like, I don't make two of the identical same painting ever. And I've only done a couple prints. Um, I'm personally not really a big fan of doing prints, partially because I, I really like to give that, that, you know, the originality or the exclusivity yeah. that comes with it. Um, I'm sure if there are any other artists listening to this right now that I don't, don't think I'm an idiot for that and I'm losing a lot of revenue doing that. But just at this point in time, at least, um, I'm more focused on just, just making originals. I, I really enjoy the actual painting process. And sometimes we, you know, with the, the business side of thing and the, the shipping and all that stuff, I, I find that that gets a little bit, uh, can be a little bit, uh, what's the word tedious or frustrating to work through sometimes. And you know, it's, it's not really, I don't feel as proud of like the original piece. If someone were to have a print, not to saying that I like, I don't know. I, I'm more focused on the originals now, for sure. That is admirable. Brad, what, which piece... I guess, that may change, though. That may change, though. We'll see. <laughs> which piece has been your favorite to work on? Um, I I honestly think uh, probably... I did, I did a painting of Travis Barker. Um, yeah, that was, I, was, I, was a, I, I was always a big fan of Blink-182, obviously, with my, my drumming background. Um, and then also... That, that that piece I feel like really tied in like a lot of what I really like into one piece. So, you know, it's uh one of my favorite bands, the drums and then the painting and then also tying in the the X ray component with the uh with the UV lighting. So that's probably one of my one of my favorite pieces that I've ever done. It's down in Portland right now. So I hope it's being enjoyed. But <laughs> there all the pieces on your Instagram already sold. Uh, yeah, mostly, mostly. I think I have four or five paintings at home, but in total, I think I've sold about, I don't know the exact number. It's somewhere between now 250 to 300 paintings. Um, and they're, they're all, all across North America, which I'm, you know, I'm really happy about. I've got some stuff up in, um, Alaska, down in Texas, um, uh, most of the provinces in Canada here, uh, I'm trying to think about where else I've sent stuff, um, but yeah, no, it's 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 been pretty good. It's I I try to work like I said before, mostly on commission basis because I don't really want to have a bunch of um, a bunch of stuff just sitting around. Um, and also, by doing commissions, you get exposure to different things that you would not necessarily choose to paint. So like, um, you know, just different different landscapes, or whether it be flowers, or you know, just just stuff that I wouldn't choose on my own to try and paint. Um, when people order stuff. That way, it gives me an exposure to try painting different things, which I I really enjoy, and I've I've I really liked having the opportunity to to try all sorts of different scenes and and figures. Awesome, Brad, are you a golfer? I I I 
play golf. So I wouldn't call myself a golfer. I can I can hit uh, you know I can hit a I can hit a get, good shot every now and then. But most of them most of them I'm glad no one's taking videos. Let's put it that way. Okay. Well, the reason I asked that is because before we started this, you asked how I found you, and the answer to your question is your Tony Finau Tiger Woods masterpiece. I saw Tony repost it, uh, saw your work. And from there, we had to reach out. Very cool stuff. How did that go down? Yeah, so uh, I, I mean, I, I, I enjoy golf. I'm a golf fan, but you know, if if you play golf, I don't know what you do, but you, every anyone, anyone who plays golf knows that consistency is key. And I just don't have the time where the, um, I, I broke my ankle a couple years back, so that really put my my golf game behind. But I just don't have the time to to get really good at golfing. But I enjoy playing. I enjoy watching. Um, as far as Tony Fino goes, um. Uh, I was actually watching the uh, the full swing documentary on Netflix, um, and I found that out of all, all all the episodes and all the golfers they interviewed, I found Tony's story was like the most compelling. Um, I really I really liked uh, just just the mentality he had behind. Um, he said he said a couple of quotes that really stuck with me, and they 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 actually I would say like apply as well to what I'm trying to do with painting. It's like, um, um, oh, what, what was the one quote? Um, oh, um winners are just losers who didn't give up i really like that and um yeah i just thought he i just thought he seemed like a, a really good guy and you know even though we're trying to accomplish different things and he's obviously much further down the uh success pathway than i am I, I i feel like i can relate to people um you know trying to pursue their dreams per se you know like that's what i'm trying to do right now i i, I definitely have a long way to go um but yeah so stuff like that really resonates so i i i unfortunately you know you you do have to do quite a bit of cold calling with this stuff to to get opportunity so i just i just messaged him on instagram i said hey tony can i make you a painting and he he said yeah so that was it so i i got a couple uh different uh pictures that i thought were cool off the internet showed him a couple um we agreed on the tiger woods painting was good so then i just put it all together and um sent it off to him and i i honestly wasn't expecting him to uh to post it on his instagram that was really nice and i didn't really know what uh what to expect on his end but you know he was he was really nice to deal with uh very appreciative and i you know I, I feel very humbled and honored now that he had that piece and and i think it looks like he's probably gonna have it up in his um his golf room that he's got there so that was it was a really cool opportunity and i was i was really happy to to put that together for him and i hope that that he'll be able to enjoy it for a long time to come it'll become somewhat of a family heirloom i'm sure i'll have quite a few though so that painting that painting is in his home yeah yeah that's so awesome. As 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 far as I know, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's I was I was really happy about that opportunity. It was it was a lot of fun to put together, and it was it was definitely uh it was you know so that's another example of like that wasn't necessarily a commission since I had initiated it, but um you know even doing that painting with all the different uh the blurring of the crowd in the background, it's like once again it's just like exposure to different things and and you know try and try and build my capabilities as an artist. I have it open right here. It's actually amazing. If you guys haven't, oh, thank you. go to Brad's Instagram and go find the Tiger Woods Tony Fino post. It is sick. I I appreciate that. Yeah, I know. And you'll see if you if you scroll through the comments, there's there's one comment in there. It's I think it just says shit painting. <laughs> since they're talking about that, since they're talking about the haters, there's just one person that that just threw that in there, but. uh yeah, golf.com also uh reposted it on their Instagram, which I thought was cool. So cool. I never thought I never thought I would be getting any kind of credibility from uh you know golf.com, but here we are. So yeah. that's, how that's, that's, not, that's how I found your work. So kudos yeah, to you. That's cool. Happy I'm happy you did it because that led to this. So Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm I'm not happy to have this opportunity to talk to you guys. Well in Brad, um when you were when you do all these paintings, do you ever put them on like your computer digitally so you have them forever like you, even though you're shipping them away uh yeah i think i i think i have uh, my my i take a lot of pictures just uh, like okay. during the painting process so my my camera roll is an absolute war zone but um i do think if i scroll through i think i have a picture at least one picture of every painting i've done so far i'm going to try and probably um consolidate that into one you know easy readable file at some point but but they're, yeah they're they're definitely all in there I, I was just wondering because I was thinking you should just send Tiger Woods that send him one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, um, 
I, I would love to. I, I, I've sent a, a lot of messages out to, to people that, you know, I, I look up to or admire and yeah. offered them paintings. And, you know, it's, uh, I, I feel like once you reach a certain level of celebrity, your, your inbox on Instagram just must be like an absolute nightmare. And you always bother looking yeah, right. at it. So, so I, uh, you know, I, you, you shoot your shot and, you know, if you, you miss, you just, you just keep going. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, uh, virtual door knocking also actual door knocking too. So. But it's uh, it's good. It's a lot of fun. I love the grind. Uh, it, it, absolutely a grind, especially considering this is like you work too. I mean, you come home and you just get straight to painting. Uh yeah. Usually, usually we'll walk the dog or or uh, eat some food first. But uh, yeah, usually straight straight to painting. So um, when you're, when, yeah, when you're not painting or working, what do you do with your time? I mean, you into you a gym rat? Do you like you like going for walks? What do you do? I'm I'm a I'm a big social guy, um, big sports guy. So usually, um, usually doing stuff, something social with friends, whether it's going to like sports games or or whatever, um, just hanging out. Uh, you know, going to cottages is always fun. Uh, I I do enjoy enjoy hanging out with other people because you know, especially like with with the jobs that I have, uh, painting painting itself, like at home, it is somewhat socially isolating, which I don't that's probably, I don't necessarily love, but at the same time, it is nice to have some time to yourself. And, uh, you know, I work right now. I don't really have like, a, I, I'm working mostly independently with, with my current employer. So, um, yeah, there's, I definitely crave the, the social interaction. So, you know, just hanging out with friends, um, you know, doing stuff outdoors, whatever, going to, going to sports games. Nice. And when you do, so, when, when you are painting kind of in that zone, do you have like music going on? You listening to podcasts or it's strictly focused on the painting? Um, it's usually, usually in the morning. So I find like, I'll, I'll probably listen to two or three hours of music and then, uh, throw on some, some background noise TV, just some, something in the background. I absolutely not in silence. I could not paint in silence and you see something going on in the background. Um, but you know, all, all genres of music, um, even, even, you know, like sometimes some classical stuff's good to listen to, um, could do some rap, could do some Taylor Swift. Honestly, it doesn't really even matter whatever whatever the mood is and then uh yeah but uh background tv background tv is usually what's going on and then when hockey season rolls around get the hockey going on in the background for sure at least that <laughs> i'm not I'm a, I'm a diehard carolina hurricanes fan oh that's, um, the most, that's the most random thing i've heard all day why so it's it's, it's not a popular opinion here in toronto trust me um <laughs> Uh, growing up, I, I used to watch a lot of hockey with my dad, um, and he was also he was always like a Hartford Whalers fan, and he became a Carolina Hurricanes fan. So um, that always had them on my radar, and I just I, I like the team. I like uh, I like uh, Rod Brindamore. I like the way he coaches the team, and it's you know it's they're they're up and coming, and I I think uh, yeah I think there's some some couple good seasons still to come here, but yeah that's my that's my team. We're, not, we're Blackhawks fans, but. Hockey doesn't necessarily come first in our family. Definitely yeah. just football and baseball. Um, yeah. College basketball after that. But uh, with that being said, rooting for the rooting for them, for you. But, you know, I, I'm not here in Florida, so that we just said the Florida Panthers down here, which was exciting. Oh, let's not talk about last year. We don't want to talk about last year. A few more things before we wrap this up. Um as someone who knows and has experienced and experiences the grind of trying to become a successful artist, for anyone listening that is in a, a similar boat that you're in, what would you recommend to someone that has seen some success? Um, I I think, you know, if if you truly love it and you really enjoy what you're doing, I think, you know, I'm I don't have any kind of thought process in, in my head like pushing myself to keep painting. It's just it's just what I want to do. Like I just I just want to keep painting and I just I just love it and I enjoy it. So I think once you find something that you're you know you're truly truly passionate about, I think that um, the motivation to to continue to work on it, I think, will come up somewhat naturally. Um, you know, I have a, I have a couple of goals in mind, like further down the line that I that I'm aiming for. Uh, but you know, it's it's I truly think that if you if you really love what you do, you'll just you'll just find a way to do it. Um, and when I say when I say goals further down the line is uh, it's, it's not necessarily like financially based. Like 
Um, for me, let's say if you know, if if I if I got some windfall or won the lottery for like five million bucks and I didn't have to worry about money, like the first thing I would do is just start painting so much more. Like I would just have so much free time to just paint and paint and paint. And where I'm at right now with my art, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, it's uh, it's kind of like recreation art, which you know, it's in the world of artists, it's not really the same as creating your own original work, like. True art is original creation. And yes, you know, I changed some elements and there's some different backgrounds and the colors and stuff that I do. But um, I, I do have some ideas for in, in the back of my head that I'm going to start launching pretty soon of like actual original artworks that, you know, I'll have my name on um, that that has just come from just come from me and that I'm looking forward to doing. But it's just, you know, for these, these first four years, probably another year still, it's just been kind of like developing my skills to the point where I'm able to take what I'm thinking in my head and have the toolbox to be able to then execute it visually so that I can put my thoughts down like so other people can see what I'm thinking through through art. So that's kind of the that's kind of the next step for me. Um but yeah, looking looking forward to to getting into that, but for now yeah, it's just, I don't I don't know. I don't know what to say to to people who want to try something. I think if you really enjoy it, you'll just want to do it. Absolutely. Brad, we look forward to the success ahead for you, man. Yeah, no, so, well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it, you know, it's st- still probably a fair amount of way off, but, you know, one 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 day at a time, one painting at a time. And yeah, it's it's a lot of fun and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to continuing to create for sure. Yeah, and you never know with social media, you know, you're one repost away from, you know, getting, you know, 50,000 followers, 100,000, and then it just snowballs from there. So for mm-hmm. sure, for sure. For sure, that's uh, yeah, that's definitely a, a thing in the. In, I think all arts, right? Like with music and um, visual arts, you know, if you get if you get one big time um, celebrity or something with a big influence to repost your stuff or something, it can it can totally uh, catalyst the whole thing for you. So, um, in the meantime, just gonna keep working away and hopefully uh, creating some stuff that people enjoy. Well, Brad, he went to work. You got two new supporters right here, and then we look forward to uh, to what you're. You got up your sleeve next. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much. It was, a, it was an honor to talk to both of you. Thanks for letting me be guest number 51 on the Everything But Politics podcast. Happy to do it. And Brad, before we let you go, for anyone listening, where can they find you? Where can they keep up with you and your work? Uh, pri- primarily, uh, the best way to follow me right now will be um, on Instagram at Brad Fenwick Art. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great night. All right, guys. See you guys next week.